Reggie here, your friendly neighborhood bodybuilder and comic book collector, and I want to welcome you to another one of my live streams. I am actually joined here uh, by Ron from ComicsPriceGuide.com, the world's largest pricing service. Ron, it is good to see you. Thank you for joining the channel. Thanks for having me. It's cool to be here. I, it, the, your backdrop your backdrop hurts my feelings. I have to tell you, <laughs> people have been telling me for quite some time that my backdrop is not exciting. I've been trying to step my game up. Uh, but as soon as your camera came on and I saw that background, <laughs> it just reminded me how I still have room for improvement. We've been around for a little while. Um, there's some Stan Lee stuff signed back there. So you know. are you talking about Stan Lee signatures or Stan Lee signed comics? Stanley signatures. Very nice. That is yeah. that. What are some of what are some of the figures back there? I see a, a old school Wolverine back there. Uh, you're gonna make me turn around here. Um, so we have those are some of them are Bowen statues. So we were big into uh, the Bowen Studios for a long time. So we have several of those. There's some sideshow statues that are at the door that you mm -hmm. can't see. Um, I see a lot of Batman back there. That's the Batman rack right there. That's right in front of my desk. So I always enjoy that. <laughs> um, if you, if I tilt it just a little bit, you can see Batman's wearing Mardi Gras beads. Oh man, check that out. We don't ask what Batman does on his own time. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was just watching an episode of Cops and it was uh it was set in Mardi Gras at the time. So I'm not gonna talk about the debauchery that I saw that, right. that Bruce right. Wayne is probably involved in. So we're just gonna move this conversation along. Right. Uh, Ron, can you tell people a little bit about who you are and what you do there? Okay. Um well I am the marketing guy at Comics Price Guide. So I do the social media things and just all kinds of customer things, price things, um, what's the Google Analytics, see how we're doing, how our different uh, campaigns are doing. So it's fun stuff. So you sound like me because I am also a marketing guy per, by profession. So we should get along incredibly, incredibly well. So uh, before we get into the conversation and talk more about uh, what Bruce Wayne is doing, I want to welcome a couple of people in the chat. Uh, Terry is here. Good to see you, brother. I definitely appreciate you showing up. Broke Cousin Comics is here. Chris Barrett, my good friend, is here. Perry Comics is in the house. Discovery Bay Comics is here. Andrea, it is good to see you, my friend. I, I will be going to hopefully that, that 25 I've sent a uh, show this weekend and I will definitely pick those Avengers books up for you. Ben, it is good to see you. Big Lion Cat is here. Steven is here. Comics and Culture is in the house. Gorilla Grodd is here. Poor Mike is here. It is good to see you guys. I am thankful that you guys took a, a little bit of time out of your day to actually join us here for this conversation. Uh, and what we are going to do during this time is to spend a little time better understanding uh, comicspriceguide.com, its various features and functionality, getting to know some of the ins and outs. A couple of people have actually sent questions over to me, and I'm going to attempt to weave those questions into the conversation that we are having with Ron. But I definitely want to encourage you to type your questions into the chat field as well. We're going to be paying attention to that, and hopefully we'll be able to answer as many questions as you guys have about the various services uh, that they offer. If you guys have not already subscribed to the channel, I definitely want to encourage you to do so so that you can stay abreast of all the content that I release on a weekly basis. I also want to encourage you to stay tuned until the end. In our pre-call, Ron mentioned that he was going to be making an announcement later in this video, so I definitely want you guys to stay tuned to that. I, I don't really have a full appreciation of what the announcement is, so I can't tell you more about it, but stay tuned because I'm sure that everything will be revealed. Is that, is that a fair statement to make, Ron, that you're going to give them all the details? Everything in the world, every question they ever have is going to be revealed at, <laughs> almost. At almost. All right. So before we, we, before we jump into this, I, I want to ask you a couple of, of important questions. Uh, right. The first question I have for you is how long have you been collecting? And I'm assuming that you are a collector. And if so, how long have you been collecting? Um, I am a collector, shockingly. Um, I started collecting when I was a kid. Uh, my parents would not let me buy Batman comic books, which I don't know. They thought they were too dark. 
And so I had to live with Richie Rich and uh, Archie books until I got old enough to buy my Batman books that I wanted. Uh, so it's been a very long time. So you you were you were into Batman, yes. But but had to suffer reading yes. Archie and Reggie and me and Betty and Veronica. Is that what I'm hearing? That that is exactly what you're hearing. Yes. All right, all right. Um, I'm okay. still bitter. Say that again. You're still bitter. I, I'm still bitter. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're bitter, and you're able to do it with a smile on your face. That is a true marketing guy at work. That's what that is. Right. So the next question I have for you, and I think I know the answer to this. I, well, let me not. Let me not assume. Marvel, DC, Image, or Independent. What is your preference? <sighs> okay. So. Uh, I have to do it this way. I'm sorry, but I have to do it this way. Marvel right now in the cinematic universe is doing something unheard of in the history of movies. Okay. 10 years, all these movies, combining them, you have to give Marvel something for doing that. But DC are the ones that I loved as a kid, and so there's nostalgia. And then Image has all these books that were the – I feel like their real creative talent is living right now because yep. they get to keep the rights to them. And so I feel like the creatives are going to image right now. So I can't give you a good answer. Okay. <laughs> but that what, but that I think what you just kind of articulated is part of like what a lot of people are struggling with is that they, they like things about all of the companies, which I think is perfectly acceptable. Do, do you have an opinion on DC's move recently to like move away from the DC extended universe that they were attempting to do with the movies? Do you think that that was a, the right move to make? Like what, what's your thought about that? Uh, I don't DC needs to get it together. Yeah. I mean, uh, Wonder Woman, in my opinion, was a fantastic movie. It was because she was heroic. When she's in the fox in the foxhole and she knows what the right thing to do is and she charges out, like everyone in the place was like, "Yes, it's Wonder Woman. She's in the house." You know, just give us that. Yeah. Give us that. That's what we want. So yeah. And, you know, I think part of it is that um, what people, at least what I've heard, is that people want to see the DC movies connected in some way similar to what Marvel is doing in terms of the MCU, how everything kind of ties together. You have your your standalone things, but there is a thread that kind of weaves through them. And right. so I think that people were a little upset about the fact that DC says we're not going to do that right now. But part of me thinks that maybe they're doing that in order to get their stuff together, in order to keep giving really good movies that then have that thread pull through in a way that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And I guess only time will tell, you know, that continuity is huge. I mean, yeah. we're comic book people. We love continuity. So if you can give it to us in the movies, I mean, we go crazy. Everyone went nuts for the Marvel stuff when they started doing it. Yep. So. so only time will tell whether they get their stuff together. Maybe now that they're uh, that DC is now in California, closer to Warner Brothers, maybe that's what they're going to start working on. Who, who knows? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, next question. And, and, and we'll see whether we can get a better answer on this one than we did the last one. <laughs> All right. So enough. golden age, silver age, bronze, or modern. Do you have a preference? Uh, I do. I do. Mine would be age, though. It would be 1968 to 1974. So a tiny bit of silver and into the bronze. I like the groovy, mod, psychedelic kind of things. If you know um, Nick Cardi's covers for Teen Titans or – um, just some of those funky Spider-Man covers. I just love all those, right? Right in that era. Just, they're just what, so what, unique. That, that era, I think you said of 1968 to 1974, was that like your childhood? Is that why you have such an affinity for that? Or, or did you land on that uh, as you've gotten older and, and gone back to some of those issues and realized that that's kind of like your, your sweet spot for years? It, it was, I went back and looked at it because when you, it's just so unique. When you think about the eighties, they kind of blend together. Mm -hmm. But when you think about that one period, it's the Neil Adams, green arrow, green lantern, and the Batman that Neil Adams did. The, um, I don't know. Uh, X-Men, the teen Titans, they all had this real unique feel to them. So mm -hmm. 
Very nice. So uh, I don't want to assume, but you've made uh, a couple of statements. You've you've name dropped a couple of times. I name dropped? You you name drop. You name drop oh. a, a specific character. So I'm curious, who is your favorite character? If you could only pick one, who would your favorite character be? It has to go Batman. I know it's a little passe now, but I've been on the Batman train for years, so I'm not getting off now. So here's the thing. I just started getting into Batman because I'm a DC guy. I'm, I'm sorry, a Marvel guy. And I okay. just started getting into DC. I read um, A Death in a Family from, uh, what was it, like 88? Uh, and was great series. captivated, captivated. And I was like, where has this been all my life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I may start being, a, I, I picked up uh, Hush recently um, and I am trying to start reading more DC. And then I've been watching The Arrow on TV. Okay. And it is really good. Nice. It's this really good. This is the good. last season. I, well, I'm on I season one. I'm on season one. <laughs> you got plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching that, and I've also been watching Flash, and I'm really, really enjoying Green Arrow. And that's a character I didn't think I would get into, but I'm I'm definitely digging it. Um, so within this Batman, right? If Batman is a favorite character, do you have a favorite story arc? Oh wow. Um there are a lot of really good stories. Some are more obvious than others. Year one is one that's pretty obvious. The death in the family is pretty obvious. Ten Nights of the Beast is a little less obvious. Um, Frank Miller's Dark Knight. I mean, how can you not mention that? Yep. Um, so I've got several. Very cool. I actually have a video that I'm going to be releasing hopefully sometime soon to help uh, new collectors actually figure out where to get on board with some of these. Um, I'm sorry, new collectors get on board with collect, uh, characters, right? Because if you are new coming into the hobby, you might not know exactly where to start. And so I think you just dropped a couple of really classic story arcs that I think, again, is a great place for some people who are new to the hobby, new to the character to actually get on board. And I'm looking here, uh, Chris from We Love Comics is saying death in the family is what started him into uh comic collecting it brother i'm yeah. telling you if i had read that back in the 80s i definitely would have been a fan as well because that story arc was fantastic so definitely some good stuff oh and, killing joke too someone brought that up yeah that was a great one too yeah uh yeah perry comics is saying killing joke yeah there's a lot of really good batman stuff out there and I, i'm definitely digging it so uh not i'm still a marvel guy right don't get me wrong but there is definitely okay. some cool stuff that's happening out there with dc and and i don't want to be blind to that i want to be receptive to it and so a lot of people have made recommendations to me about what to read and i think it's fantastic so all right. So uh, during the introduction, you kind of mentioned, and also during our, our prep session, you mentioned that there's a lot of things that you touch, right? As a marketing guy, we tend to touch everything across an organization, right? If there is a gap to be filled, direction to be provided, we typically jump into that spot. Given that you are a collector, right? You have been for a long time and you're a Batman fan. I'm curious how you being a collector influences some of the decisions and some of the, the things that you are doing at the company. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I'm guessing that there's a connection between those two, two things. There is. Um, so for what we do is we typically think, what do I really want? And we kind of brainstorm about what it is that we want our collection to be or do and then we try to make it happen, which is fun. The other thing that's important is with speculation. So I was around during the 90s bubble that happened, and Wizard was driving the prices up for speculation books, and we don't want to be that. So Brian and I and some of the other members and the admins recognized what happened before. And it hurt the hobby. And so we don't want to strongly encourage, we want to give people hot books, but we don't want to encourage them to speculate and hurt the market. But how do you walk that fine line? Because it seems like it's a, a fine line of you saying that this is hot mm -hmm. and people not wanting to be behind the curve. So how do you balance those two things? Because I think it's, I think it's wonderful that you're basically saying we want to bring awareness, but we don't want to hurt the market because I don't know that a lot of people think about that. So how do you toe that line? Well, there are certain things like when you see an independent book 
pop up and no one knows why it's hot. And yet it goes up to a hundred bucks and everyone says it's because it's rare. Well, there are a lot of things that are rare in the current comic book world. I feel like that's a marketing ploy by those small publishing companies to get their name out there. Mm -hmm. As a marketer yourself, you know, they use these ploys to kind of, and I feel like people get sucked into it yep. and they buy those books. And then a couple of months later, they're not worth anything because nobody actually really wanted that book. But when a movie announcement comes out and says, hey, we're going to do Oblivion Song or we're going to do Invincible as a movie or we're doing this thing on Netflix, Umbrella Academy, that's an obvious one. Okay, it's got low production run. You've got high demand. Poof, it goes up. Yep. That's the kind of things that we want to report on when it's legitimate, not when it's smoke and overly, mirrors. Yes. Yeah. And and what's funny um, is that I, I literally recorded a video on that very thing recently. And the video was all about, it doesn't matter who says it's hot, right? I think it's great that people are like bringing awareness around these things, but I think it's important for collectors to say, okay, cool. Let me take this data in, but let me go do my own research to figure mm -hmm. out, does this make sense, right? Is it hot right. for a reason? And does it fit with what I am trying to do for my collection? And, and I think you just articulated that extremely well and you you did it i think from a genuine perspective probably not even having seen that video which i think is really really wonderful are you saying i don't watch your videos reggie come on man brother brother i put you don't out even have a, a lot beard of content today. I, I put out a lot of content let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so i know people i know people are like i didn't get a chance to watch that one because i'm still watching this other one so i don't want to assume i don't want to assume um so I think that that's very helpful, right? That that you being a collector does influence some of the things that you guys do because you're always asking yourself, if 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 I were me and I'm building this site for me as a collector, what mm -hmm. kind of features and functionality would I want to have? I think that's really important. And then I think also social responsibility, right? In terms of the market, I think is also a wonderful sentiment that you just share. Uh, one thing I was curious about is that I, I've been talking about comics price guy for, for some time, right? Since some of my earlier videos, I, I included like thumbnails or images or reference you guys. How long have you guys been around? Well, um, back in 1995, um, Brian created Marvel world. So you can tell what kind of guy he is Marvel, Marvel world. Um, and then he, I think he kind of realized that maybe Marvel might not like that or they <laughs> might come after him for that. So about 1998, he bought Comics Price Guide and started building it from scratch wow. in his basement. Wow. <laughs> Just because he loved the hobby. There we go. And here and, we are. And you've mentioned Brian twice now. Do you want to tell people yes. who Brian is? Because I don't want to assume that, that people do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Brian Neely is the guy who started Comics Price Guide. Um, he is the owner. Um, he is the main man. When something happens, it's mostly because of him. So, Got it. Yeah. That's super helpful. And, and I really like the Marvel World name. I'm going to just put that out there. Uh, <laughs> but I could see how it might like alienate. Uh, some DC people, some independent people, and it may also, um, you know, send the wrong signal to Marvel. They may not like that. Copyright infringement is like a big deal, you know. Kind of, kind of um, a big deal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. People frown upon that, you know. So um, that that definitely is helpful. And then, how long have you been there? I'm curious. Um, I've only been here for a year and a half. Okay, very good. So when when I've I've been on your website at various points, um, and I don't know when I first noticed it, but I, I definitely saw it recently because I actually used it for the thumbnail for this video. Uh, the tagline was something along the lines of the largest online source for comic book pricing in the world. In fact, I think those are the actual words because I did a cut and paste. Um, can you tell me what this is based upon? And, and I can make a couple of assumptions that it's based upon the number of books that are in your database uh, that Brian started in his basement. It might also be based upon a number of, of registered users, but I want to kind of hear from you. What, what are you pointing to as evidence for that statement? Um, well, we have a million 50,000 something books in our database. So that's just the page. So there's a million 50,000 pages and it has raw and graded. And then there are four pages for each of those. Wow. Broken down. So 
we're the biggest. <laughs> we have a lot of things listed and it's being added to every day. Um, we also have, from when we started keeping track, over a million members and that could be free or paid. Wow. So that's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. And, and, and you just uh, highlighted the fact that there is also, uh, to some degree or another, a lot of pages on this website as yeah. well. Um, yeah. There are a lot of aspects to your site. And I, and I wrote myself mm -hmm. some notes here. There mm -hmm. is the pricing guide. There's the community tab. There's the blog. There's the forums. There's a marketplace. Um, how do you guys, if someone were to ask you as the marketing guy, how do you go about describing what the site is and what it offers? Um, well, I mean, in one thing, we are collection management. One thing, we are a price guide. And a third is that we are a sales platform. So the sales platform is the one that most people don't always see. We try to be a community. Um, that, that was Brian's vision in the beginning is to make this a comic community. Um, so that's what we try to be. But um, I can walk you through, if you want me to walk you through kind of- Yeah, I think, I think, I think that would be awesome. I mean, because again, there's so much to your site. I think it would be awesome if you could take a couple of moments to kind of maybe highlight some of the major um, sections and the major features and functionality. And what I'm gonna do while you're doing that is I'm actually probably gonna be a little quiet because I want the camera to kind of focus on you and what you're actually going to show people. Okay, so can you see it now? Yes, I can. Okay. So when someone signs into the site, they can see this. You can see my collection. So these are the books I've recently added. So I could view my collection here. And I haven't put all my books in, so sorry about that 70,000 number. I'd like it to be more. Um, and then you can click into pretty much anything. These are the different publishers. So it lists all the titles that I have. And then at the bottom, it says the top titles and tells you how many issues you have of each. The top issues, top graded, top graded issues. Um, you can also do a display case. So you can take a picture of your book and put it into so these are my i guess some of my best comic books and these are pictures of my actual books these aren't um stock images and when That's, it's saying your best books um is that based upon the the value is that what um decides what gets pulled into that display case or can you decide personally that you want to show some books in that display case versus others independent of value you can do it independent of value. It will sort them by value, um, but you could do it. Um, it's really about if you put the picture in there, then it will show it up in the list. If it's below 48, then it won't show in the list. So it only has the top 48. Um, you can put in your want list. And the cool thing about the want list is that when someone has it for sale, it'll tell you they have it for sale. So if I click here on my want list, there's always a couple of different ways that you can get to different places. So it, I'm missing Amazing Spider-Man number 19 from volume two, and it looks like this guy has it for sale. So, and then you can list things for sale just by clicking on a single button and you can list them for sale. Very nice. And then are there fees for that? Well, we can get to that later. Keep doing your walkthrough. I'm sorry. I, I, I was quiet for a long time and it hurt me. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Um, so you can do a classified ad. You can manage your sales listings. You can see drops or gains in your collection. So the Immortal Hulk is going through the rough. Um, Amazing Spider-Man, a Car Carnage cameo has gone up in value. Um, so there's so many things. There's there's a depth to this site that people, I think, don't often realize. They think it's just one thing. They think it's just one dimensional. Um, 
but there's just so many things. Very cool. Thank you for walking us through that. Cause I mean, there were, I knew you guys were a marketplace, but I didn't know. I hadn't gone that deep to be honest with you. I, I tend to go to the site for the pricing stuff primarily, right? Um, but it's right. good to know that there are some additional um, features and functionality. When you talked about Brian wanting this thing to be a community, can you talk a little bit about what does community mean to comicspriceguy.com? What are you, what are you guys trying to build there? Is it the marketplace? Is that the community component or is there more to it? We've done a lot of work with the marketplace. Um, we, we just want a place where people can uh, sell their books and where you can get to know someone that likes things that you like. And I mean, in, in this world, it's kind of a weird thing, but I mean, Brian is that guy in person. He wants to, he wants to hang out. He's the person that, you know, you say, hey, you wanna come over and hang out? Yes, he wants to hang out. So that's kind of what he wants to make with Comics Price Guide. Very nice. So uh, who do we have? Hank here is a is a, a new subscriber, I'm guessing, and is finally joining a, a live stream. So definitely welcome to you, Hank. Uh, um, Ron, you just mentioned something about a, a Carnage cameo, I think. Uh, and Chris is asking a question specifically, which, uh, which book were you referring to? Oh, um, what was it? I'd have to go back and look. I think it was... 360. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that helps him. Um, and then Fabian is asking a question here around a way to catalog all of his books in a collection and start selling and trading um, some that he no longer wants to hold on to. Uh, and his question is, does comicspriceguide.com offer that service? I think I know the answer to that, but I'll, I'll yeah. leave it up to you to answer that. Absolutely. So you put in all the books, um, whether you want them in your collection or sales, you just put them all in and then you just click one button, a green button that has a, a money tag on it that says list for sale and put your price in and you're done. It's way faster than eBay. We want to compete. So, you know, we know there are other price guides that are popping up. You know, it's just inevitable. We get it. But we're not competing with them. We want to compete with eBay. We want, so we developed a feedback system this past year. Hmm. We're developing our sales platform. We have people who actually make a living selling on our site alone. That's all they do. And you're referring to a feedback system of, um, I did a transaction with this person and I want yeah. to give them a score. I want to drop some notes in about their communication, their speed, yeah. shipping, blah, blah, blah. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Okay, so to that point, I have a couple of follow-up questions. One of the inevitable questions that someone is going to ask is, do you give people the ability to bulk upload their collection into the system or do they have to enter it one by one? Next question is, do you offer the ability to scan the book in terms of like the UPC code or something like that or the, um, the CGC code to facilitate uptake? I'll pause there to see what your thoughts are about those things. Okay, so... You have to fire at me one question at a time because my <laughs> mind's kind of racing a little bit. So, what All right, the bulk, first bulk upload. Bulk uploads. All right. We don't have bulk uploads. You can't take your Excel spreadsheet and upload it. You can, like, I have a run of Batman, um, 300 or 400 issues of Batman. I could input a run in about five seconds. So I just put the start number and the end number and I can upload all those boom in like five seconds, but we don't have a bulk upload. There's just, it, everything would have to match from Excel to our database. And then you have um, people that might try to steal the, our data by going the other way. Yeah. And so we just can't do it. Uh, yeah. and, and we know that people want that, but we just can't. Okay, that, I think that that's yeah. helpful. The the upload feature I definitely get um, because the the formatting is is sometimes messy when you have a like a text delineated file or whatever it happens to be or an Excel file. It can be very messy to to do that. So the next question um, uh, is around: Are there fees associated with the transactions? Because that's typically a question that people ask as well. If someone is a gold member, so they pay us fifty dollars a year. They can sell an unlimited number of books with no listing fee, no closing costs, no upcharge, no seller's fee, blah, blah, blah. All those fees that everyone else adds on to, we don't have any of them. 
And if you've sold on any of those other platforms, $50 is nothing. Yeah. I've yeah. spent more than that on eBay fees you when I sold for a month. You mean feedback? There you go. Feedback. So uh, another question that someone asked, and this was a question I actually had that I lost as I was trying to wait. Uh, Perry Comics, thank you, brother, for, for asking that. You may mention that you could, uh, within five seconds, do a run. So let's mm -hmm. say I want to load in New Mutants 1 through 100, right? right? I do that. I drop it in there. Can I then go back into that and remove the two issues that I'm missing? Or I'm sorry, right. that I don't have? Yes. Okay. There we go. Perry, there you go. I think that's actually not a bad function, right? Giving me the ability to bulk uh, add a range. Well, that, that helps, right? Because oftentimes like I personally have a run of amazing Spider-Man that I'm working mm -hmm. on. It would be great mm -hmm. to be like one through whatever, and then just remove the stuff that I don't have, or go ahead and just add those things to the want list so that I can hopefully find them through the platform. Right. Very good. So I want to steer the conversation back uh, to talking a little bit about um, the, the pricing services, because I think that that's something that I, I definitely want to focus on. There are uh, lots of transactions that are taking place mm -hmm. for comics that are being sold. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, how often is the site's data updated to reflect those transactions are we talking uh same day two day what are we talking about in terms of of how quickly the site is updated there are people updating the site every day i mean we try every day to make updates as far as pricing goes so okay um and then uh there's another question here that i that i got from my buddy uh chris barrett i guess you guys have a watch list uh, and his question was, how often is the watch list updated? It depends on what's hot, Chris. Um, so there's, we, we have, so for our blog, we typically post a hot list of comics every couple of months. And then we also have that watch list there. You can also go to our site and see uh, the books that have changed in value recently. So if you went to the site and looked at price guide, clicked on that, and then it says recent value changes, you could see all kinds of things that have gone up or are hot. So, yep. very good. And, and uh, my buddy, I'm sorry, I cut you off. I apologize. I, I was going to say there are several different places that you can find that information. There we go. My, my other buddy, Chris from We Love Comics, is asking a question about buyer protection program because that's one of the benefits of, of the eBay and the PayPal systems is that they offer buyer protection. Um, and, and he's asking that question for some reasons be, you know, because there, there is fraud. It, it happens. It's, mm -hmm. it's inevitable if money is involved. Do you guys have any protection um, in place for, for buyers? We... Um we've done a couple of things related to that. The first is we tell everyone to use PayPal because we want them to have buyer and seller protection on both sides. The second thing is we have eliminated buyers from our platform because either they were not responsive or because they were unethical. So we'll just take them off. I mean, if you're going to be that way, we don't want you. So that, that's not a person that you want in your community, you right, know? Right. So, so uh, one other question here from, uh, from Lexi Graham is asking whether you guys have a mobile, a mobile op, whether the site is optimized for mobile devices, or if there is a, an app that can be used. Um, we do have an app. The site is optimized for mobile. That's first, but we also do have an app that's built, um, in the language of apps, I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. Uh, I know it's a different language, so it works better and blah, blah, blah. I don't know what it is. I'm sure people know. But, and and uh, is that a fully functional app? Uh, is it fully functional in the sense that you can use it to access the, the, the various features that we've already talked about on the site? Or is it geared towards more pricing than anything else, than, than uh, the buying and selling of, of comics, for example? Great question. Great question. Okay, so it um, the app is geared toward buying and selling. The, our thought behind this was you're going to use the app when you're at a convention or when you're at a comic shop, and you want you're looking at a price. Is this a good deal on this Action Comics number four thirty two? 
you know, and you look it up and you say, oh, yeah, I think it is. Or you show the person behind the counter and say, hey, what about this? This says it's worth this. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so that's how we see the app being used. But there is an integration. So if you have uh, an account on Comics Price Guide and you buy our app, sign in with that account, it will show your want list. Mm. It will show your whole collection, you know, so you can use it and feel completely safe that everything that you have on the website is on the app. Very good. Very good. And is it both Android and Apple? It is. Yes. Very good. All right, cool. So I, I have personally used uh, the site primarily for raw pricing that that's, you know, uh, that's you guys are my resource for the raw pricing, but I've also noted that notice that you guys now have graded comics as well. Was that new or did I just miss it before? Uh, graded comics have been on the site for a long time. So okay. when CGC uh, kind of rose to prominence, um, we started getting people saying, Hey, you guys should give prices for these. And so that's when it started. So I, I don't remember when, but it's been a long, long time. Okay. So I just missed it. That was a, that was the most polite Reggie. You missed it response <laughs> ever. Well done, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I don't mind being told that I'm wrong. I, it just matters how you say it. <laughs> so yeah. you mentioned specifically uh, CGC in that response. Um, the, the graded column that you see on that right hand side is, is, are those values reflecting, uh, CGC only, or are you guys pulling in CBCS? Are you pulling in PGX? Like, what are you guys pulling into that FMV that is being shown on screen? Um, so first of all, let me say that we're not trying to offend anyone with this, but, um, uh, based on our research, which is thousands and thousands of prices, we only use CBCS and CGC. I have nothing personal against PGX. I wish them all the best, but their prices are just substantially lower and it would drag everything else down and it would make us look like we're doing the wrong thing instead. Yeah. So, so, so how do you guys reconcile that or how does that work? If you're pulling in both CGC and CBCS, are you doing an average of those two books? Are yeah. you doing the most recent sale? Um, how do you guys reconcile the timing and the two different grading companies into the FMV that's being shown? Okay. Um, so it's an average price. Uh, and then the time frame depends on the book. Because if, if it's a new variant cover or if it's a key issue like you have right behind you, first, oh man, first Wolverine, first Wolverine, first Kingpin, black <laughs> costume, black costume, Venom, Punisher, <laughs> Thanos. If it's like that, if it's yeah. a common one, then, you know, the time span can be very short. If it's a rare book from 1942, that very few people have, then we have to expand the time frame that we use. Yep. Okay. So let let's say that it is a common book. The most recent sale was a CGC book. A month ago, there was a CBCS book. the The CGC book was a hundred bucks. The uh, CBCS book was ten bucks, but it was a month ago. You're, are you doing an average of those two or are you focusing primarily on the CGC because it is the most recent sale of that particular book? Wow, that's an extreme example right there. I know, I, it, you know. Um, for you, and I think you maybe can phrase it a different way if you, if you want to. What I'm trying to get to is, is, are you just always averaging or are you sometimes taking just the most recent sale because the last time that that book was sold, it was a long time ago, or it was for significantly less, and therefore we dragged down the value of the book. That's kind of what I'm trying to get to. Well, I mean, there has to be some massaging of the data, or there has to be some recognition of what's happening. Like, if an announcement came out that a movie is hitting, you know, the day before that announcement came out, a book could be one thing. After that announcement, it's going to be something completely different. So we try to consider those factors involved, you know. So 
we can't add in something that was ridiculously low to it because that's not the market anymore. That announcement was made. It's out there. Yep. Um, so I think that definitely helps. And that's kind of what I was trying to get to is, is are you reflecting the dynamic nature of the market? Is someone to some degree or another physically looking at what's mm -hmm. happening or are the transactions just being sucked in, being averaged and being spit out? But it, it sounds like there more care is being taken that you guys are spending some time thinking through what is happening in this market and is my price, my FMV reflecting the dynamic nature of the market um, that that's kind of what I was hoping to kind of hear from you. And I'm, I'm hearing, yes, is that fair? It, it is. That is what's happening. And we have, um, we have a group of admins. Those are our volunteers on the side that have extra privileges and they make me look like a blooming idiot with my comic book knowledge. I'm serious. I'm yeah. like, I don't even know how these guys have this much knowledge. And so we have a large group of people like that, um, that, are so instrumental in helping us see things. And so you have these eyes over here and, and they're not all in the U S so cool. they might be in Canada or they might be in a different region and you're, and they're pulling in their information and their data. And you're like, okay, yes, I see what you're talking about. Um, so I think that's one of our really big benefits is just the people, the knowledge base of the people. Yep. That there are actually people with, some great history, some great understanding of the market that are actually looking at this stuff on a regular basis. It's not just, you know, you guys have a site and this thing is just turning and burning on its own. People are actually touching this stuff and paying attention. I think that that's wonderful because one of the things that I was going to talk about is that anytime you're pulling data in, there is that mistakes can happen, right? Data isn't always clean. And so how do you guys identify that there is there is some bad data that needs to be thrown out or needs to be looked at. How do you guys monitor that? And then how quickly are you able to make adjustments on the site? Um, sorry, someone's handing me a note. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, we have PGX. Uh, someone asked, can we sell PGX books on the site? Yes, you can sell PGX books on the site. You just have to label it as such. Like I said, we're not trying to hurt them. So yep. you can definitely sell them on the site. Um, the other note that I got is that we have uh, advisors. Uh, we also have comic advisors that help us with stuff. And we have a guy that used to own a comic shop for years and years and years who has ridiculous knowledge. So, Very good. Very okay, good. so now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember what the question was. Now, oh, errors in data. How you guys yeah. address errors in data? How quickly do you make adjustments? Um, the funny thing is with comic book people, we're serious about our funny books. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we are serious about it. So I feel like if we make a mistake, when we, we if we put a mistake out there, people would be like, dude, no. Yeah. What, what are you doing? Yeah. Get rid of that crap. Yeah. And they, they tell us that. I mean, I'll get people that call me on the phone. Like I told you earlier in our pre-go, the uh, New Yorker, New Yorker that called me. Uh, he, I mean, we get people all the time that call or email or get on our forum and say, you need to fix this. And and I think it's because they care. Like people are passionate about this hobby and they care. I can't tell you how much advice I've gotten about my setup here in the room, about maybe something I said that wasn't quite right in, in a video. And I think people do it because they actually care about the hobby and about the market and they want things to be right. And I think that that's where that's coming from. So I think your answer was uh, was very helpful. And, and we want to be right. We I use, I typically tell people, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Yep. I appreciate the heads up. Yes. Brother, feedback is a gift. That's it one is. thing that I've learned over my career is that feedback is a gift and it's up to you to decide how you want to handle that gift. You can, you can deny it and you can say no, thank you. And you can push back and you can be angry or you can hear what they are trying to say and make the adjustments based upon that, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, can you, so we've talked a lot about like data, right? Um, you guys pulling in CBCS, you're pulling in CGC data. Um, you, you have your, your graded books. Of course, you have your raw books. Can you tell us where are you guys getting your data from, right? Are we looking at CGC, um, uh, uh, eBay sales? Are we looking at heritage? Are we looking at comic link? Are we looking at private dealers? Where is all of this data actually coming from? 
Um, that's an important question because if you just go with one data source, sometimes you run into trouble. Um, so we try to use, you know, all kinds of different, everything that you mentioned and plus, uh, we have Facebook, we have a Facebook marketplace that we monitor. One of, um, our, our guy named Rick monitors our Facebook group where people can sell books and all that data comes back to us. We also have the sales on our site that we as admins can look at that data and see what's being sold. So we have, I don't know how many sources that are all pulling in and so. Very good. So it sounds like there's a lot of data that's coming in and you guys are finding a way to kind of reconcile it, make it make sense, scrub it, make sure that it's good, legitimate data. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's what ultimately gets reported out. Uh, someone asked a question and, and I think it was Perry. Perry's asking a question here around FMV. And his question is, let's say that you have one of those uh, less common books. Mm -hmm. where, and maybe it's a golden age book. This book hasn't sold in nine months. Mm -hmm. How are you guys assigning an FMV to that book? Or, or are you not even assigning an FMV to that? How do you manage that? Well, if it has sales, I mean, since we've been around since 95, mm -hmm. we have this huge history of sales, but if it hasn't sold in eight or nine months, but there is a history of sales, we're going to keep it at what it was the eight or nine months ago because that's the only thing we can do yep. since there's no sales. If there's never been a sale on the book, then we have to put no value on it. And there are a few books on our site um, that have no value because we can't put a value on it without sales information. And is, and is there a way for someone to discern that uh, the FMV that has been assigned to that book is an old FMV. Like for example, in the same scenario, will I know that that book hasn't sold in nine months or uh, let me just pause there. Will I know that that last time that that book sold was nine months ago based upon the FMV that I'm looking at? We don't give um, a date when we last put that price in there. So um, no, you wouldn't know that. Okay. Okay. And I think Perry's making a comment here. Uh, so you wouldn't have an FMV just they recently sold. That makes sense. So I think we kind of addressed it, uh, his question. So I think that works. Cool. And again, if you guys are in here in the live stream, definitely drop your questions into the live stream and we will try to address them as best we can. And definitely stay tuned because uh, Ron is going to be making an announcement towards the end of this video that I think that you guys are going to want to hear. So definitely stick with us. Um, so uh, my, my next question is here, can you tell me a little bit about the math behind the values that are actually being shown for both the raw and graded books? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that you're um, taking the raw data that we just kind of talked about from all these sources, you're, 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 you're tweaking it, you're massaging it, you're doing your averages for your FMVs. Um, so I'll, I'll pause there to kind of see what, how are you guys like aggregating and then reporting out all of this data that's coming in? Um, I think we've kind of covered it because it, it's, it's the average, if it's a hot selling book, it's going to be a much shorter time, you know, a month or less. If it's a slow selling book, it's going to be a much longer time. Um, some of our recent changes were like Nova number one and Eternals number one. So you can kind of look at what we're doing there. Mm -hmm. If, if someone wants to go on the site and look, um, they don't have a real specific formula. That's just what the sales dictated they be. Yep. Very good. And one of the things that I've heard is that it's it's easier, and you correct me if I'm wrong, I've heard that it's easier to capture sales data for graded books because they're graded, they they have grades assigned to them, and it's a little bit more difficult to do the, the data for raw books. Um, is it do you feel that way? And if so, how do you guys how do you guys manage through that? Work. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of hard work by lots of people. <laughs> I mean, I don't know any other way to do it. I mean, if you're giving um, a CGC 9.8, that's a very specific book. If someone lists a book and says, hey, this is near mint. Okay. What does that mean? Yeah. So it definitely takes some massaging. It takes a lot of eyeballs. It takes a lot of work to figure out 
the price of things. And, yep. and, and most people realize this. They just don't think of it in terms of the quantity that we're dealing with. When you go to eBay and, or to some other site that sells a book, you, you do your research in advance, and it takes you a while to figure that out. What's yep. the real value of this book? So, you know, I think most people get it, yep. but they can't see it in the scope that we're yep. talking about. Work. That is the answer, people. Work. No, no, seriously, I think that's a legitimate answer. So I want to... um to and someone asked this question earlier you've touched on it very briefly but i want to circle back and kind of talk about it a little bit more can you talk with us about the various levels of membership that are available to people because again you guys are a large site and i, I know a lot of people have awareness um but but for those that may not have awareness of the site or have awareness of the different levels of membership. Can you walk us through those levels? What does it get you uh, or what does it get us? And then what are some of the associated costs? Okay. So someone can come to our site and they can sign up for a free membership and we don't take your credit card information. There's it's literally free. You can look up every single price that you want to. There's no limitation on the amount of, times that you can look things up on our site. You can't look them up eight or 10 times and then have to be charged. It's, you could look up all million 50,000 50, books if you have that much time. Um, if you're, but you can't put your books in the collection. You can only put 50 books into the collection because that uses our resources. I mean, looking up everything uses our resources, but we wanna be that to the community. Um, and then we have a silver membership, which is $5 a month or $30 a year. And that allows you to put 30 books in. Uh, I mean, sorry, 300 books into the site. Um, and then we have a gold membership, which is $8 a month or $50 a year. Just $50 a year. You spend more than that on coffee. Come on. <laughs> and that lets you put an unlimited number of books into your collection it lets you sell an unlimited number of books on our site it i mean you have full access for 50 bucks a year yep very okay. good so let's look there's a couple of questions here uh jose is dropping a question and he's saying what are the shipping options is it up to the seller uh, what if you purchase the book and it's not uh, the quality that was described in the seller is gone? Can you talk? A, he's got a couple of questions in there, but let's first talk okay. about shipping costs. How, how is is that dictated or is it up to the, the buyer and seller to negotiate that? How does that happen? We do not um, make them assign a certain shipping cost. They assign the shipping cost. Um, so we give autonomy to the seller. Um if the book is not purchased, the yeah, he's saying that. if the if the book is purchased and it's not the right quality, like someone says it is near mint and it comes in as fine, um, I'm guessing that's a, maybe the buyer protection or there's some other options that people have to uh, find some agreement there. Um, right now, um, if you're you're dealing directly with the buyer, the buyer and seller are dealing directly with each other we are technically not in the middle of it we are just connecting the two pieces together so that's why we encourage people to always 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 use paypal yep. so that you have some protection and you can get your money back um on anything that you buy so let me um, let me play but, this back basically what i'm hearing is that you guys are essentially serving as a marketplace to allow a buyer and seller to come together to establish the, the sales price of the book, the quality of the book, the shipping options for options for the book, and then to work out that deal. Yeah. If there is something where the buyer and seller don't agree, they should be using PayPal for one to resolve that issue independent of your website, correct? Correct. There because, we go. Because we're not taking anything from it. I mean, if if people want us to be involved in the transaction, there's a cost associated with that. And so we figure you know, it's easier if these two just come together and figure it out. Um, now, I have bought things on the site and it not been as advertised. And so I sent the, the seller something and said, hey, dude, this is, look at this. This is not, 
And he was like, oh man, I am so sorry. And gave me my money back and let me keep the book. So the people that are on there that have developed the feedback already um, are, are top notch guys. They really are. So one thing that I also just heard there is, um, yes, buyer beware, because that's always important, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also mm -hmm. just like on eBay, look at their reputation, look at how many transactions they've completed, look at the feedback that's been given, because there is a feedback mechanism that you guys have built into this thing. And you should go into buying that book with someone who has a solid reputation, which should give you comfort that they are a credible seller on the site. Yes? yes. Correct. There we go. Correct. All right. And so Hank, to your question about a refund that would have to be initiated via you having the conversation with the seller and then you going through PayPal if something happens. My hope is that, uh, and I know what you guys are doing is like, what's the extreme worst that could happen? I also try to look at things and what's the best that can happen. Mm -hmm. The fact is you could meet some awesome people that have some awesome books that you really need and you're not going to be paying crazy eBay fees. And so that to me is, is the upside of what we're describing as in all things things, there is risk involved. And so it's up to each one of us to kind of mitigate that risk by doing our research in advance. So hopefully you guys can, can appreciate that. Exactly. All right. So there's a comment here from uh, Fabian. He says he started using uh, the site for research and as a database for his collection. And he's asking how, oh no, he says he's using comic book, what is it, database? Um, he's asking how that compares to Comic Price Guy. I actually don't even know because I don't. I'm not familiar with that other site. I'm not. I'm not sure if you are as well. Uh, are you? Let me start there. Um, I know of Comic Book Database. Do they give prices? I don't know if they. Oh, uh, he's kind of talking about it as a as a uh, reference, I guess, for his collection. Maybe to see the books that he's interested in buying. Maybe I'm not sure. But let me let me ask the question yeah, a slightly different way. Um, could you string together a couple of sentences that might articulate why comics price guide is different from some of the other sites out there? Because that may be maybe, um, a more positive way of, uh, talking about comp competition without bad mouthing the competition. So what makes you guys different, special and, or better than everyone else? Well, I think. There's several things, but I mean, we do have anything that you're looking for, we're going to have in our database. That's if you're a big time collector, that's important. We're also trying to be innovators in that we're always trying to move forward with what we're doing. Um, like our feedback system, we developed um, different graphs to show you which members have which books in which grades and if they're graded or raw. So everyone can see that if you look up a page and go to the bottom of it, of any book on the site, uh, which is kind of fun. We're trying to innovate as far as uh, variants go. So the variant explosion that's happened um, has caused us to rethink variants and how we put them on the site. So there are now labels for different printings the variants, the exclusives, the retailer incentives, the retailer appreciation, the RRPs, the alternate publishers, so that it clarifies things. For years, Whitman has been called a variant. Whitman is not a variant. Whitman is a publisher. That's like saying every Marvel book is a variant. <laughs> it's not. It's a Whitman book. Yeah. So we've started moving all the Whitmans out of all the places that they were in with Gold Key and with Marvel and DC, we're still in the process of moving them, but no one else has done this. I mean, so we're trying to help the collector. And, and I think that's who we are at our heart is us, the advisors, the, the admins, everybody just wants to help collectors. So. There you go. I think that was, that was a very helpful answer. And as I'm doing this, kind of wrapping this thing up, if there's questions that you're seeing popping up in the chat, uh, Ron, that you want to answer, let's go ahead and, and knock those things out. I don't, I don't want to leave anyone hanging if there's something of interest there that you want to kind of speak to. Um, so as I as I do wrap this thing up, unless there's more questions that kind of flow into this thing, um, where can people, and this is an easy answer, right? It's kind okay. of built into the question. Uh, where can people learn more about comicspriceguide.com? <laughs> built into the question 
thank you. You might need to you might need to ponder that one. It's, it's a softball pitch. Um, <laughs> Comicspriceguide.com. So. There you go. And then you guys are also on uh, some social media as well. Yes. Do you want to go ahead and give them uh, the platforms that you're on as well as like the screen names and usernames and that kind of stuff? Uh, we are on Facebook. We have um, probably 27,000 people on our Facebook page. Um, we've just started doing Instagram. So we're Instagram backslash comics price guide. And if you want to meet personal, it's Instagram backslash Ron Batman. Um, Go figure. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to figure out. Um, so we'd like to grow those. So if, if you would be so kind. Yeah, folks, I'm telling you, uh, if you get a chance, swing by Instagram because you guys know that's my my preferred platform. That's where I interact with most people. Definitely check out those those two Instagram pages. Give them a follow. Interact with these guys because uh, I've, I've had a couple of conversations with them and, and they are they are good guys. I've actually enjoyed each of the interactions that I've had with them. So if you guys get a chance, definitely check that out. So Ron, we we've talked about a lot over the course of this um, over this discussion, and and we walk people through the site. We've talked about the different features and functionality. We've talked about what makes you guys different and unique and special. Is there anything else that you would want to add? Is there anything else that you would want people to know about the site, about you, about Brian, about anything? I want to give you guys an opportunity to kind of um, um, you know, hit the nail on the head here as we wrap this thing up. Wow. Wow. Just giving me carte blanche, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there is a delay here, so I got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Um, I, wow. We, we, we have dreams for this site. You know, we, we know that we're a big site. We have a lot of things going, but we, we want to keep pushing. We want to keep becoming better. We want to keep growing. We want to keep adding things to our site. Um, we have, I'm trying to get, I don't know, shh, don't tell Brian. Um, I'm trying to get statue price guide. Uh-oh. So I own that domain name, and I'm trying to get him to add it to the site. Don't tell him I said this. That's cool. He'll know. He'll know. Is, is there a pricing service for statues now? Because I, I, that's foreign to me. You see this one behind me. I've had this thing since I was a, uh, a teenager. It's like a just a, a plastic blob. Uh, is Are there services now for pricing for statues? Uh, not that I found. Now, I do have probably four or 500 statues on that statue price guide. That's just that's a side project for me. Yeah, man. yeah. Side project. But um, I would love to tie it in. I just think that helped grow the community and um, I think it'd be awesome. That's but, very cool. But the special thing that we wanted to offer is for people that are Reggie people, uh, <laughs> who are the awesome people that watch Reggie's videos, we wanted to give you a 20% discount for a new gold membership. So if you go to our site and sign up, you can put the promo code in Reggie collects and you get 20% off. That's awesome. And it's R E G I E Reggie collects. And that gold membership is 50 bucks for the year and they get 20% off that. Can they do the monthly or do they have to buy the, the annual in order to get the 20%? Um, they, uh, for that particular thing, they can only do the annual. They only the annual. And then how long is this? First, let me say, Thank you very much. Because one thing that people are always asking me for is, Reggie, can you hook us up with like some discounts and, and incentives and things like that? They, they appreciate the good information and the information leads them to take action. And so if I'm going to take an action, can I save a little money along the way? And so I think it's very generous of, of you to put this in place for people to save 20% on the gold membership. Uh, but is there a, a limit in place for how long this offer is going to be available to people? Um, we, we just put it for a week. So it's, it's one week from right now. Uh, just put that promo code Reggie collects in there. Save so some money. So today is Tuesday, March 7th. You have seven days. I'm guessing that's a week. Was it five Wait, days? Today's not Tuesday. Should, Thursday? 
Sorry, I need to learn to read. <laughs> Thursday, the seventh, and you guys have a couple of days to take advantage of this very generous offer. Uh, Ron, I want to thank you, brother, for for all the interactions that we've had offline. Thank you for agreeing to come on the live stream to talk about um, the website and the, the services that you guys offer. I think this has been a very good conversation. I think it's been informative for people based upon the responses that I'm kind of reading off here to the side. Thank you and Brian for the generous offer to help people save a couple of bucks. It, I've really enjoyed this conversation, so I wanted to to say thank you for that. You're the best, man. I try, brother. You are, man. And it's, Lex, it's it's fun. I, I can see talk. us. I could see us hanging out, man. So you you need to come to some convention in the Midwest so we can <laughs> go and hang out and just have a good time. Brother, we might make some magic and we can talk about Batman because I'm starting to be a Batman fan. And uh, if Brian is watching this in the other room, Lexi is saying <laughs> that statue price guy would take her life away. And I think that's a good thing. <laughs> Thank you, Lexi. Thank I, you. I think that's a good thing. But you have at least one customer that's going to sign up for that <laughs> one co-signer. And I have a feeling statue guys are very passionate. And so I think yeah. that if you guys do decide to move into that area, that there could be some traction. So Thank you to both of you guys. And I want to thank everyone who is here in the chat. I want to thank you guys for hanging out, spending a little bit of time with us to understand more about this, the, the site's features and functionality. Thank you for all the wonderful questions that you guys have dropped in. Hopefully we were able to answer the vast majority of them. Thank you for the thumbs up as well. And if you guys are watching this and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I definitely want to encourage you to do so so that you can stay abreast of all the content that I release on a weekly basis. If you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so at ReggieCollects on Instagram. Instagram and ReggieCollects at gmail.com. Until next time.